Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Zonder Speaks. I'm Austin, also known as Zonder. If you're wondering why that's my name, you should check out my last video, Who the f is Zonder? Today I'm gonna to be talking about something that's a little bit more juicier, you know? Maybe it's something that uh, you can relate to if you're watching this video, or you have a friend or a family member that can also relate to it. It's my da -da -da -da, coming out story. So I guess before we go ahead and jump in, Let's grab ourselves a drink, you know, grab yourself one. Today I have a nice Highland Brewing Rising Haze IPA. Let's check it out. One question that I always get asked is, when did you know? Hmm, let's see. I guess, I guess I kind of always knew, you know? Um, ever since I was a young age, I'd say about like five or six that I can think of. I always remember a time of like, you know, I always remember my grandmother. I was extremely close with my grandmother. I spent like every day with her growing up. And she used to always tell me, you know, that you're special. Like people may not always treat you fair. Like things are gonna be, you know, a little challenging for you. And I never really knew what that meant, but she knew what it meant, you know? Growing up in the South and Alabama in the US, I mean, it was very, um, like being gay was not something that was celebrated or is celebrated in any kind of way, really. Um, so I definitely would say I lived a double life for up until I was about 21. When I mean a double life, I mean that people might have suspected it, people might have thought things, but I never ever told anyone, you know? I always had that with every gay person has where people are like, they ask you those questions like, don't be offended, but, or one of my favorites is, can I ask you something? Or it would just, people would come straight out and be like, are you gay, you know? And all, every time that somebody asked me that, I would get so defensive, I would get so hurt, even though I knew that I was gay, you know? I'd be like, why, why would you ask me that, you know? But I'm pretty sure every gay person has went through that. Growing up, my parents, um, you know, I can remember my dad always being like, watch your wrist, don't have your wrist like this, or watch the way that you walk. So I spent my entire childhood like trying to, like always thinking and being aware of everything that I was doing, you know, like making sure I stood up the straight way or that I walked a certain way, that I talked a certain way, you know, just trying to please everybody. And, and I, I just spent so much of my life, like so much of my life, so worried about what everybody else was thinking all the time. I can remember, you know, being just in my bedroom all the time, just so upset, you know, like how could God make me gay? You know, I would imagine like, man, my life would be so perfect if I just wasn't gay. You know, if that one thing wasn't holding me back, you know, I never wanted to be gay. I never wished it upon anybody. I thought it was just like, I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna take this to my grave. I'm never gonna tell anybody. And you know, the funny thing is, is everybody already knows that you're gay. My parents knew, my siblings knew, nobody wanted to admit it. My mom, when I was about 13, I don't even think either of my parents have ever discussed this with each other, but my mom literally caught me watching gay porn. That was awkward. So I did my experimenting a little bit when I was in high school and I felt so ashamed every single time. You know, I was like, I'm never ever gonna do this again. And when it came time to go to college, I was like, all right. Awesome. This is it. This is your chance to start over. You're going to be straight. You got this. Nobody has to know about your past. Nobody has to question it. You are a brand new person. Tell me why I hooked up with a guy the first day of orientation. Anyways, they just carried on for a long time, you know, throughout college, the back constant back and forth, like me trying to join different Bible studies, do different things, you know, to help cure this away. And then I went to Sweden and everything, I got to see that, you know, gay people were living, they were happy, everything. But even while I was in Sweden, I never did, I never came out to anyone, not my closest friends there. I actually had sex with a female for the first time in my life when I was in Sweden. Before that, I had just been lying like that. I was like, out here sleeping with girls when I hadn't even seen a vagina really in real life. I was terrified when that moment happened. Yeah. But maybe that's for another story. But so I come back to the United States. It's my 21st birthday. I'm having this awesome party. I have all kind of friends there, you know. We're having the best time of our lives. And 
Then I go away for the weekend and I come back to my house. You know, I'm living with, at the time, my three best friends. Life's great. I walk in and I'm like, everybody's there with their girlfriends. And there's just like this energy over the place. Like, I'm like, all right, this is weird. I'm definitely not thinking that what's about to come is to happen. So my friend, my oldest friend in my life, he's like, yo, like, let's go get something to eat. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, let's go for the ride. I'm down, whatever. So we're riding down the road, you know, we're catching up from the weekend and he's just like, oh, so-and-so, you know, like she met like your roommate and like they kicked it off and she told us that you have been on some kind of app called Grinder, and you like hooked up with her friend who's a guy. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, this is happening. So I literally just go like, literally like that. And I'm like, all right, like what do like, <laughs> and so we get to the restaurant and I just go in the bathroom and I start having a panic attack. And I'm like, oh my God, like, holy shit. Like, this is really happening. Like, do I lie about it? Or do I just finally come clean? You know, I've been like living with this burden every single day of my life. You know, I'm like, Oh my God, this is like, this moment is here. Like, what do I do? Do I go back in the closet? Do I, like, am I out? Will people believe, like, what? And so I just come out and I tell the truth. And I'm like, I'm gay. And that was like the first time that I had actually said those words out loud, you know, really. And like to someone who didn't know that. And I was like, that actually felt kind of good, you know? I was like, you've been my friend all this time. Yeah, I've been living a double life, but I'm still the same person. I'm still your homie. I'm still like your road dog. I'm still just the same person, but I just love different people than you do. And when that moment happened, it was like an instant relief off my shoulders. If you ever have any people in your life who are gay and they come out, like you automatically already start noticing changes. I got fine. like. Look at this. I didn't have all this before. <laughs> it was like, once you have that level of just not giving a f anymore, you know, like being yourself, being able to be free, you're able to express yourself more and dressing and trying out different things, you know? And so you just become into who you are. And so that's what I did. I started becoming into who I was, you know? Once I told one person, I told my other best friends, I told everybody, you know, did I lose friends? Yes, I lost some people, but were they really friends? I don't think so, you know? So without that person, you know, like, I probably wouldn't be here. I would probably be somewhere married in the closet, like having kids, living this miserable life, you know, and hurting more people than I'm actually helping people, you know, now by being me. And that's all I really wanna say to everyone is that if you have people in your life who are, you know, gay or who identify something other than the normal heterosexual, Wait, love those people, you know? Accept those people. We all we all are different. We all should be able to celebrate that, you know? Like, the one thing that people want to hear is that they're gonna still be loved, you know? That's all people want is to be loved in life. I don't care what people say. We all need each other. And so, the most hurtful thing you can do is to put conditions on your love for someone that who you tell that you love them, you know? Don't go and tell them, like, I love you, but long as you don't, like, start dressing as a woman because that's a whole nother topic, but that's a huge conception in like the South at least, and especially in the black community about gay men is that if you're gay, then you want to be a woman, you know, you want to do all these things. Have you ever just stopped to think for a second as well? Like, why is it that like only women can have their fingernails painted or only necessarily wear like extensions in their hair or high heels? Did you realize that men started that back in the day? And in society, like, we changed that? Like, so those kind of things don't define anybody by who they are, you know, or who they love. A gay person is a person who sleeps with the same sex. That's all that is, you know? The rest of that is just all added bonus that we put in our minds. And so that's my coming out story, you know? It wasn't really a coming out, it was an out it, but I'll take it because it made me who I was, and I'm so grateful for that.